We're talking to Shea Howe, designer and user interface engineer. What the heck does that mean? Uh, I, I like to interpret it as a builder. Builder? Mm -hmm. Creator? Builder. Someone who designs and codes. Nice. So you spend a lot of time doing code then? Yeah, yeah. Um, probably 40% design, 60% front-end development. So HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript as far as like manipulating the DOM and things like that. So mobile frameworks? Uh, not largely. Really? No. Um, I like to write my own. I, like, I like to use media queries and things like that to sort of interpret how I want. Um, uh, it helps me keep things sort of lean, so to speak, right? Um, and I just, I'm not a huge framework person in general. I've never really, like, gravitated towards one. Um, maybe that's just me being, like, more of a nerd than I need to be. Like, I'd rather sort of, like, know what that framework's doing, so I like to build it myself. So there's a lot of people out there that are trying to figure out, you know, do they hire somebody externally? Do they need a, somebody like you? What kind of things can people do on their own to get to the right place as far as the design? Um, that's a great question. Uh, there's certainly like a lot of resources, right? So websites, um, plentiful uh, books, if you're into reading books. Um, I would recommend, um, just doing a bit of research, right, and seeing like what you're comfortable with. Um, and that might be as simple as like sketching on a, a napkin and, and, and talking to someone about that sketch. Um, I know I have people uh, come to me a lot and just email and say, hey, do you have like five minutes to sit down? Um, and just show me like what they're working on. And I'm completely like receptive to that to give them feedback and help point them into the right direction based on like what problem they're trying to solve. Um, and I'd recommend people to do that. I do it a lot where if I'm working on something and I want to go approach someone that I don't even know, per se. Um, sometimes I just walk into Starbucks and say, hey, let me buy your coffee, if I can just show you the sketch or something I'm working on and, and try and get some feedback based around that. So the developer community is really, it's really open and we're here at 1871 and it's uh, kind of a collaborative workspace. Is, is that pretty much the norm? Is that how developers work? Do we share a lot and help each other, this open source thing? Is that, is that working? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I think I depending on who you ask. Um, I think here at 1871, yes. Um, there's Code Academy in there, so they're, they're basically teaching people how to program. Um, there's multiple startups in there, and I see a lot of people in their pair programming um, and basically sharing what they know with each other. Um, I see companies sort of bouncing back and forth between one another, um, and that's like one of the great things about it is like, if I'm working on a problem, chances are a company around me or someone sitting behind me has already encountered that problem. And I can just wheel my chair back and say, hey, you know, check this out. What do you think? Have you seen this before? Um, and vice versa. You know, people can roll their chairs over and say, hey, um, you know, encountering this bug. We can't quite figure it out. I remember you, you know, complaining about something like this on Twitter or something. Yeah. Um, and, and being able to help each other that way, I think, very much so. So it kind of just proves the social learning aspect of one of the things we've been talking about. We learn from our peers, the people around us, and... Um, kind of work together to, to create solutions. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think the majority of what I learned comes from my pairs. Um, you know, I can read books and I can then do tutorials and things like that, um, but I'm more of a type of person that learns like from a hands-on experience, uh, actually like doing something uh, to facilitate that learning. So um, more geared toward that, um, you know, working with someone and developing that knowledge really helps. So switching gears a little bit, uh, tell me, what do you think the biggest advantage of mobile? This, you know, it's moving pretty quickly, uh, a lot faster than the whole web thing happened. This is just uh, on fire. What What do you think the advantages of mobile over like the web technologies? Oh, um, or desktop. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's growing at a rate quicker than we've ever seen before, right? Um, and that's amazing because that opens up like a world of opportunities. Um, you know, new applications are being built based around like these experiences that are simply going to be handled on mobile devices. Um, I can say like recently, like I was looking for a house and just being able to use like Zillow and Trilio, some of those apps to basically walk around a neighborhood and say, well, well how much does that cost? Um, those are experiences like you can never have before. Um, and I think like that's only like just the beginning, right? So and when you talk about learning, like there's so much we can be learning um, you know, we have ebooks. I read a lot like on trains and things like that, but that's not like that's the tip of the iceberg, right? Like right. that's what we're seeing above the water. That's what below that's going to be like so much greater and more powerful than that. That's like yet to be exposed, I think. What do you, what do you think the challenge? What's the biggest challenge people face when, uh, you know, they're maybe changing their strategy from from a desktop 
to to the mobile? Uh, that's a great question. Um, it's maybe just a barrier. I don't know. I think a lot of people see it, and then maybe it's pretty much like a buzzword right now to be responsive or to be mobile. Mm -hmm. um, but I think people are like coming around to that idea of like you know what like this is something we actually yeah. need to look into. Um, and I hope they do it from a, a good standpoint, not a selfish one, not of, well, I guess we just have to do this, right? right. Like, I would love to see people actually innovate on how they do that um, and, and find new ways to sort of approach that. Um, like business owners, like if you run a restaurant, right? Like use a mobile device and say, hey, um, let's detect like what time it is and where you're at and say, hey, you know what? Like actually we're closed right now, um, but we open again tomorrow at noon. Or you know what? Like let's detect your location. Say you're right around the corner. Like here's directions on how to get here. Um, things like that that like you could show on like a contact us page or something like that that I think would be amazing to do for some of these businesses. So instead of concentrating on the limitation of the screen size or whatever, focus on the, you know, the opportunities the mobile has beyond yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's sort of like how my approach is to mobile is like when I'm building like a responsive website, like I don't go and, and write rules for what an iPhone site should look like or what, you know, it should look like on an iPad. Like I write rules around like when experiences start to get awkward, right? Like when your browser becomes a certain size and things start to break, then I'll implement rules saying, hey, like here's a media creator to sort of fix that problem. Right. Um, and I want that to just scale across all sorts of mobile devices and then that world. Um, so it's not about limitations, it's about no. possibilities. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, and I, like, I try not to tie those experiences to one device or, um, you know, Apple versus Android or anything right. like that. Like, I think build an experience for everyone. Yeah. Excellent. Well, looking forward to your session this afternoon. Cool. And uh, thank you for chatting with yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. All right.